thank you for coming, everyone. I appreciate you coming in this like COVID pandemic <laughs> thing. I applaud you all, my friends, new friends, um, colleagues, network partners, photographers, all that. Thank you so much for coming. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Mary Bell's background. Um, so let's get started. Uh, Mary Bell is a fine art photographer from Orlando, Florida, um, residing in Orlando, Florida, I residing, should say. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she uses herself as a subject matter in her images, uh, which you can take a closer look at after the talk. Um, she produces composites and craft bold, emotional, gripping, edgy, unique images. She finds beauty in darkness and has a great under and has a great admiration for all art and expressionism. Mary Bell is greatly inspired by the Baroque paintings of Michelangelo and surrealist painters like Renu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Renu Marguerite, mm -hmm. uh, Frida Kahlo, and Pablo Picasso, to name a few. She creates creates self portraits that look painterly to depict uh, various stories of emotion and concepts of self-expressionism, layering with her own professional growth, layered with her own professional growth. Her vivid imagination has evolved by being an observer of her environment. Mary states, I create images of what I wish or imagine happening and manipulate them into my own world through my work as a photographer and storyteller. In turn, I like to show my process as a way of inspiring others, which you certainly do. Mary Bell is an, a genuine Fordham, oh wait, a graduate. <laughs> she is genuine as well. <laughs> um, she is a graduate of Fordham University in New York City, um, where, where she holds her bachelor and master's degrees. As a single mother of a teenage son and daughter, she stays very occupied while working a full-time job at Darden Restaurant's headquarters here in Central Florida. She is a, she, she is a Story Alpha female grant recipient. Sony Alpha female, female. recipient. Okay. <laughs> um, descriptions of the Sony Alpha female grant are as follows. Actually, I'll let uh, Mary Bell tell you a little bit more about that. How many of you have heard of the Sony Alpha female grant? Yeah, it's a pretty big deal, or I think it is. I think so too. Yeah, we're really excited that she has her work at here in yeah. City Arts and also um, that she resides here in Central Florida. So we're going to share a little bit more about what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll ask her a few questions that she'll share about her experience and journey. And hopefully you can learn a few things and, um, and share some experiences with Mary Bell. For sure. Thank so you so much. So tell us about the, um, the Sony experience. Thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, Sony has a, a a grant that they give to women and specifically women photographers because the industry is you know it's a male dominated industry although we've come a long way um, you know nowadays there's a lot more women using a camera because it's it's you know you can buy, buy a camera anywhere and it's super easy to use and YouTube you can YouTube tutorials on anything um, so, you know, it's just become more of an everyday thing, especially with phones, you know, so photography is really coming, becoming to the forefront um, and, and they want to celebrate women. So what they've done is they've created a grant um, for a specific women that they see are excelling in their careers, are passionate about what they do um, and want to share it with others. And so this grant is nationwide um, and it's awarded I believe the first year they had it it was awarded to five women um, and since then it's grown to 12 women a year and so I won for 2020 February no this past February February January 2021 I was awarded the grant and um, it was for my self portraiture work um, I was the 10th winner 
out of 12 nationwide, which is amazing. It's such an honor. I still can't believe I won, honestly. <laughs> um, and I've done tons with them in terms of interviews and talking to other um, applicants that want to apply for it. Um, and they've, they've been really great with everything. Um, as a matter of fact, I just did an interview with them on Sunday um, where I was talking, not, not this past Sunday, I think last Sunday, uh, virtually, a virtual um, interview with them. And, you know, they were nice enough to pay me for it, which is really, like, I would have done it for free, okay? But they also paid me for it, which is really nice. Um, so they've been fantastic. Well, we, de we definitely appreciate that. Thank Artists you. Artists getting paid for their work, right? Thank let's, you. Uh, let's yeah. do a little snap snap for that. <laughs> snap snap. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit more about your journey as a photographer and some of your experience. How did you end up where you are in your subject matter and uh, working with self-portraits um, throughout your body of work? So um, I was a, a dancer for, I started dancing when I was seven. I did all sorts of dance, uh, ballet, tap, jazz, all of it. And, you know, it's a like having your body kind of learn ballet and molds and, and see progress, it's very, like it takes forever, it takes so long. Um, and then I kind of found photography in college using a uh, 35 millimeter film and the, I, I saw instant gratification from taking the photo to seeing my images develop right it was instant and I'm like oh my god this is awesome I don't have to wait years in order to actually see my progress like I do in dance I can I can see it immediately and I fell in love with it then I spent eight hours in the dark room um, at Fordham University uh, just developing my own uh, negatives uh, making my prints um, and I thought it was just fantastic then I kind of gave it up because, you know, college and I needed a real career. So, um, you know, when I gave it up, digital photography came and it was all about JPEGs and, you know, taking the camera and you can see the camera, you can see the image instantly. And it's a, I, I hated it. I hated it. I was like, I can't do this. I can't go from being in a dark room to this digital thing. What is this? So I gave it up completely. Um, and then I would pick up a camera every, every now and then to take pictures of family and friends. Um, and then it, while I was going through a divorce, um, I picked up a, like a real DSLR camera. And my friend Carl here, he's one of the first people to kind of help me and kind of point me in the right direction in terms of like the photography industry but um, I picked up a camera and um, I was going through the divorce and I was of course super sad and everything like that so um, in I wanted to shoot but I didn't know what to shoot and so I, I also didn't have a model to shoot and I'm like I don't feel adequate or good enough to shoot with a model and my family and friends they were sick of me asking them so I started <laughs> shooting myself and um, I was doing graphic design for Darden restaurants at the time. So I would shoot myself and I would say, all right, let's just play with this image. I'm gonna make myself float. Or I'm going to just, you know, no one's expecting me to do anything with these images at all. I was just doing it for fun. So I would make myself, to, you know, just have my own little imaginary world where I'm floating away from my problems <laughs> or I'm showing my problems in a way that's not, um, that's not apparent. It's, it's more kind of obscure. Um, and it kind of took off. And, and to my surprise, people, uh, they resonated with it and they wanted to see more. And I started making more, not for them, but because I'm like, all right, there, there might be something here. And so I, I kept on with it. Um, and then I kept kind of refining my work um, then I started shooting with real models and um, doing real commercial work for Darden restaurants. And so, you know, that leads me here. That's great. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Now, I, I would think taking self-portraits and selling them as, um, you know, you're entering into the photography world 
it's also very personal, right? So I would, I would be a little intimidated by yeah. doing this. Um, can you share any techniques and or stories, um, you know, during that process? Yeah, one technique that really helps me, because um, believe it or not, I don't like to take pictures of myself. Um, unless they're like very composed with good light, like I just don't like it. <laughs> so um, I'm the type of person that if I don't like to do something, I'm going to force myself to do it. Matter of fact, one of my friends said to me, she's scared of, you know, a certain kind of movie. And I told her, well, what you should do is you should sit and watch that movie and watch it until you're desensitized to it. Like, and she's like, what are you talking about? You sound crazy. And I'm like, no, this is what you should do. Like, expose yourself to it. So I sort of did that with some portraits. But um, I kind of had a little technique where I, I wouldn't show my face. I, 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 I wanted to put myself out there, but I didn't want to put myself out there, you know? So I came up with techniques of like kind of hiding my face or, or like taking an image from the back or using my hair and flipping my hair. So I didn't want to show my face. And I think that helped because not showing your face makes something, um, you can put anyone's face in there. Like having a portraiture where someone's looking at the camera, it really connects the audience to the person but not having a face makes it a story, mm -hmm. I feel like. So that worked for me. So that's, that's a technique that I used then and I still kind of use now. So I would, I would imagine it makes people kind of wonder more about, you know, they're telling their own story, looking at right. portraits that don't have the faces. Right. Um, so you have a, a lot of beautiful photography work here. And I know the process um, to become an alpha a Sony Alpha female artist must have been um, long and a little bit, yeah. you know, intimidating. It was. Um, so again, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you have some slides. Um, so your body of work that's here, not all of them are part of oh. the Sony body of work. Okay. Um, so talk a little bit about um, your past work and then this particular project. Um, my past work. So. Um, my past work, uh, I've done very, I don't know, I like to hide my face and make a story. Um, but it's also like a story within a story. So I'm hiding my face, but I'm also using photography um, composition and, and rules of photography as well to really bring home the point that I'm trying to make. For example, that image where it's white on white, it's called negative space. Um, and I'm wearing like a white hood. Um, that one is using negative space, which is, um, you know, a, a rule in photography composition. Um, I'm to the, uh, the lower third of the screen. Um, but I'm also, I have my own kind of take on negative space, which is negative space mentally. Then I have negative space physically. So, you know, I have different kind of uh, interpretations of negative space in my work. Um, and uh, I think I answered your question. I don't remember. I might yeah. have forgotten. So, so that's some of your work before the Sony grant. And then they wanted you to oh, create yes. a specific body of work yes. for the grant. Yeah. Um, I, I can't help to notice that you pointed out the white one with the negative space. Uh, but the one next to it with the black curtains is also fascinating. If you look closely at the image, um, Mary Bell is behind the curtain in several spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see her uh, yeah. silhouette basically throughout that. And then you see the one where you can tell more vividly. Right. And that you one. also won an award for that, I believe. I did. That one's called Awakening. Um, and it's sort of symbolic of, you know, stepping into your awakening, whatever that may be, whether it's religious, um, spiritual, um, you know, whatever that might be. Um, that image actually <coughs> is inspired by the movie The Truman Show. Um, and in the, I love that. It's one of my favorite <laughs> movies. It's so good with Jim Carrey. And it, it, Jim Carrey's playing a really serious role where the world that he knows 
isn't the real world. You know, if you guys haven't seen it, please go out and see it. Um, so at the end of that movie, he is awakens and realizes that his world is false. It's made up for a TV show. It's not the truth. So he's awakened to the truth. And so that, that's where that piece um, came from. And it, I won a Guru Award for, from Photoshop World for that image in the artistic category. Um, because again, it has several elements of um, photography composition, um, but it makes you think, you know, it makes you think what's going on here. Is she going in? Is she coming out? Um, and then it's really hard to tell because of the glass. I'm trying to find a good medium to print it on where you can see the actual pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, the actual the different me's. Yes. Silhouettes. Um, but yes, I'm covered by, by veils in each one. Um, and then there's one of them finally coming out. Um, and so I used those two images as part of my Sony Alpha Female grant. And just a little about that grant, um, they had uh, lots of requirements. To me, it seems a lot. <laughs> um, I had to um, write an essay proposing what my project will be about. I had to give a budgetary breakdown of how we use the funds, um, submit a two minute video um, about myself, complete a whole application online, it was a whole thing. Um, and this was actually my third attempt at this, uh, this grant. So, um, and I, I would say to anyone here, just try it. And if you don't, if you don't um, get to your destination, keep trying and make modifications um, you, and you'll get there. So what do you think um, caught their eye differently than your past uh, two um, entries into the competition? Was it a different yeah. concept? So that basically the grant is funding a new project. So the right. money is going towards that project, a right. body of work. Yes. So uh, I think what made them uh, what made them see my work is you just have to submit a two minute video. And in that two minute video, I said, I'm a Hispanic photographer. I am the first in my family to graduate college, graduate high school, get married, get divorced, like all that stuff. Right. Um, and, and this is how I, this is a little bit about me. And then I walked, should have, I should have gave it to you, the video. I walked to, the, to a chair and pretended like I was taking a photo and I, f I threw a piece of veil up and when it landed, it landed as that first image that you see there. And then I made a slideshow of all the different types of, of me. And I think, I think that grabbed their attention. And so my project, to circle it all back, <laughs> my project is about how, um, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has affected us and affected us, affected our mental health. So I wanted to bring awareness, mental health awareness to how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected us. And so with this image here, um, it looks a little creepy, it looks a little odd, and that's the whole point. The whole point is to make it look scary because this is where, so it, it's a series of images and it starts with um, when the pandemic first starts and it, I take it through like a roller coaster of different kind of stories and emotions. So this one here, um, when I'm in the bathtub, do you guys remember when the pandemic first started, everyone was like washing their hands, you know stay away from each other and like masks weren't a thing yet and you couldn't find masks so this is about like keeping clean washing your hands um use hand sanitizer and no matter how much you keep clean you feel like the inevitable is going to happen mm -hmm. like you're going to turn the corner and COVID is just going to like reach out and grab you <laughs> so that's what i made this image to be those are my hands um and you know, my you know, pandemic is just coming for you 
in any direction. However, it's not just a pandemic, right? So I also made these images to be applicable to other things as well. So this could be whatever you're going through now. You're mm -hmm. trying to protect yourself, but can you really protect yourself? You know, there's all these things coming at you. Did you add the background or was that part of the set that you were That was shooting? a set. Um, I actually shot this. Are you guys familiar with Wall Crawl Orlando? Um, it's like a mm -hmm. studio and they have different sections of already yeah. built sets. It's super cool. So the owner, Joshua, um, lent me his studio space after I won the award. And he, he said, you know, come on over and shoot. And so I used this section. There's two giant rubber duckies that go on top of the bathtub normally, and mm -hmm. I removed them. Got rid of those. Yeah, and it's this space is norm normally super happy and cheery, and I didn't I did not want that. <laughs> <laughs> I that wanted very, scary very serious and doom and gloom. Yeah. yeah. Did Did you have to do a lot of takes of your hands to get to where you wanted? Yes, I <laughs> crawled on the floor. Oh, it's very intentional. With one remote hand hand uh, remote in one hand and I crawled and I was like click click like <laughs> rolling around everywhere um, yeah but it was super fun and um, so this image is about honey and prosperity this is a hopeful image right because um, Honey in, in, has a symbolism of, of richness, of prosperity, of fruitfulness. Yeah. But, yes. So I wanted to really emphasize that with the honey. So I wrapped myself in yellow tulle and I made it look like honey. This was really difficult to shoot um, because I was lit. This is lit with window light, just oh, window wow. light. Um, and I used um, black cardboard poster boards and I made like almost like like black curtains but I made I made them small so just a sliver of light came through mm -hmm. and angling my face in just the right light and having that honey drip was not an easy task have you ever had honey in your eyes it stings <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it stings I how, thought I would have to go to the emergency room how many takes did that um, Thank you. <laughs> I lost this honey all over that tool. I lost count. It must, it must have been at least seven, seven different takes. And I almost wish I had the honey coming from my hair down to my face. I feel like it's a little too, too neat. Um, I like the way you can see it on the, on the veil. Yeah, me too. You can see a little bit of it. That was not intentional. I'm, I'm happy the way that, the way that came out. Um, but I am mostly proud of the light in this one because I wanted it to look painterly and dramatic, very much like uh, like Rembrandt, mm -hmm. um, very kind of sturdy and strong, um, and just having the honey drip from my see that honey on my on my yeah. eyelash. Yeah. When I opened my eye, y'all, <laughs> that thing went right in. <laughs> I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> In hindsight, I'm gonna have a towel next to me. I'm gonna have a bucket of water. <laughs> I did not plan that well at all. Um, so, so when you uh, do these self-portraits, you have a timer. Are you going back and forth? What I do both. Like? Sometimes okay. I I do a timer. So on your camera, you can have your camera uh, take a photo every two seconds, or every five seconds, or sometimes you can set your timer for thirty seconds. Um, and then you get into position and then it can take two images, five images or mm -hmm. 10. Um, and so I used the remote for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Remote's smart. been my friend. <laughs> yes. That's good. And so, um, this one, uh, someone recently asked me if, if I, how many mannequins I use for this one. And I just used one. Um, this one was, you know, lit by window light. Mm -hmm. I have a YouTube page where I show how I, how, I, how I made this image. But yep, it was one image, I'm sorry, one mannequin, um, lots of compositing. Um, and I wanted it to feel like I was stuck in a sea of people that were not covering their faces and I'm worried um, 
and that's why I'm kind of looking back like, help, <laughs> you know, and I'm wearing this mask. Um, and shout out to my friend Joe, because these are his mannequins Hello. that he lent me. <laughs> he just has two mannequins chilling in his house. I'm like, <laughs> not in my house. Exactly. So that mannequin's name is Mary, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she, her brother or cousin or husband, his name is Larry. He's a Larry he's the guy. Larry, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, Sony used this image as like the cover for for my final presentation, which I think is pretty cool. It's very impressive. Yeah. I like the way it fades into the back too. I don't know if you had to do that. If you manipulated that. I did. Yeah, I did. This uh, this image took me about kind of embarrassed to say, but it took me about three or four hours to edit because I just couldn't get it where I wanted it. Like I had the vision in my head, but my hand was doing something different and I couldn't work it out well in, in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't tell people this very much because I want to <laughs> kind of make it seem like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing, y'all. I just wing it. I know what the end product, I, wanted to, I know what I want it to look like. Oftentimes I don't know how to get there. And, um, and sometimes it changes. You know, that's a creative yeah. process, right? Right, it does change. But I think that's how you really learn through trial and error. And it, it might take you forever, but eventually you do get faster because now I'm, I've so gotten you, much you faster. you had this thought in mind when you started the project or this photo shoot? Yeah, um, actually for every image I shot, I sketched them out on paper before I shot them. Okay. Yeah. Is that and what you normally do? For something like this, yes, because one of the one of the kind of ideas that I had for this project is I wanted to create my very first uh, series, cohesive series of artwork from you know where one image flows with the other and it mm -hmm. tells a story from start to end. I've never done that and I really wanted to, and I really wanted to have it displayed in the gallery. And so for me to do that, I really had to sit down and think about what do I want to say. And I thought that having the whole story of the pandemic from the very beginning of kind of being scared, not knowing what's going on, washing your hands mm -hmm. and going through the whole kind of roller coaster of emotions. Um, I sketched those all out on paper. So and it's very relatable. Yeah. And relatable. I, I think so. I think most art projects, when there's a story you know, to the body of work, you know, it, it intrigues the, the viewer. Yes, I, I think, I think that's so. always a nice, um, yeah. a nice thing to strive towards. Yeah, um, and sometimes when there's different ways to make things a cohesive kind of set. You can use that by imagery. Maybe they're all shot in the same room. Maybe they all have the same light. For my pieces, they didn't. So what I used to kind of unite them all was color. And I played with color. So mm -hmm. here you can see um, I'm playing with color and playing with a little bit of uh, cyan and um, kind of yellow orangey skin tone. And you'll see most of my pieces have a cyan undertone. Here I'm wearing a blue dress, so it's either blue or cyan. Um, and so this image here is, it's a, it's a, uh, tr a tr uh, triglyph. Triglyph? Triptych? Triptych. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm nervous, y'all. Relax. Um, it's a triptych. <laughs> I thought it maybe was a word I didn't know. So. <laughs> it's a triptych. So here I start on the ground and I'm upset with being at home as we all were cooped up in the house, not being able to go places, see your friends and family. And you kind of reach this point where you're like, oh my God, when is this going to end? And here I'm, gather, I'm gathering the strength to get up. I'm leaving behind what it is that's holding me back. Um, again, doesn't have to particularly just be about the pandemic. It could be mm -hmm. about anything related to mental health or spiritually. Getting back on your feet. Whatever, yeah, exactly, exactly, getting back on your feet. And here I am not only back on my feet, but I am hopeful and I am, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I am seeing um, a way out, right? Um, so that's why it's a triptych. So I wanted all three pieces to go together. 
um, and tell its own little story within a story. Um, and so for this one, um, I really wanted the light to splash outside of the curtain and onto me. So I used a speed light, um, which is like a detachable light that goes on top of the camera. Um, and then I had it in here and then I used like a white fabric to just kind of diffuse the light even more. So the light shining on me is the actual light from the speed light. Um, and then in Photoshop, I just enhanced it just a little bit um, using blend modes. And I can get really dorky when it comes to Photoshop. So stop me. <laughs> I can go off on a tangent. So. Um, this one isn't part of the series, but um, it's one that I shot at home using window light as well. Um, and, and the reason so during quarantine, it, it's not part of the Sony series, but right. I did shoot it during quarantine. So there's a whole, I sent a whole bunch of images that I actually shot at home when we couldn't go anywhere. Um, I was like, all right, screw it. I'm bored. I'm just going to do something. Mm -hmm. So I got these flowers. I think it was for my birthday. Which a is year tomorrow, ago. everyone. It's tomorrow. Happy Yay. birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I, um, I'm not a big fan of flowers. I do like dead flowers. And there's a reason for that. Because I think dead flowers are like the skeleton of what was. There was something beautiful living there once and now it's gone. And that's the remainder. And it can't be more, it can't be more dead. Like it's dead. You can't make it more dead. Like a flower will die slowly and decay but dry roses are done that's the end of their <laughs> death their their life so that's why i like dry roses and dry flowers so i made it a whole thing where um i kind of made it kind of painterly and artsy and really feminine <laughs> and and all that and this was one window light here and there was a second window light coming in this way behind this and that's a drop cloth? It's, it's like one of those pop-up drop cloths. Yeah. Um, and it's super old. It's like from the 90s. It has, <laughs> has stains in it. And I was like, it's perfect. It has stains. <laughs> Nobody will see it. I can make it blend in. Um, this one, again, is window light. And uh, this one is about feminism. And, you know, just letting, embracing your feminine energy whether you know in our feminine you know our cycles and our bodies and what we go through and just embracing being um sexual and passionate and yet soft and nurturing and mm -hmm. being a mom and all that so that's why i wanted the movement of the cloth mm -hmm. to kind of look like um that's not graphic, <laughs> but I think you know where I'm getting at. So I kind of <laughs> wanted to look like flow, right? And so that's why I really wanted to make it vibrant and, and very pow in your face. Um, so is that a gown or is that a material that you just... That's staged? a really small material that oh. I, it's, it's <laughs> actually uh, turquoise and I turned oh, okay. it this color. And what I did was I shot many frames of me throwing it so I like this is the camera. I shot one close to the camera and then further away and then further away. That's why you see here it looks it looks kind of blurry because it's closer to the camera. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm shooting further, further away, um, it, it, you see more of the form of the fabric. And then it's on my waist um, and I was wearing it on my waist, but, uh, you know, I took different pieces of that fabric and I composited it together. So it looks uniform and i think that black um i think that that was like a black tablecloth that i used no it wasn't a tablecloth it was like a like a board a black board okay. yeah and then you have like a white curtain and again the light coming in from the left yes that's natural natural sunlight i know the exact time where the <laughs> sun is perfect in my house and i'm always like all right it's time to do something <laughs> It's a time, very small window. Shoot. Who else does that here? <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is another one I did in uh, quarantine. I kind of wanted to embrace my wild, my curls. 
Um, so I made it all about my hair. So that's why I'm wearing like, this is a painter's cloth. Um, and I shot it against um, something white. I think it was like a white fabric or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But what I like about this image is the stark contrast of my skin tone against the white. And I like the texture of this white cloth against the stiff texture of the background here. I like the color of the lighting in your hair as well. And the title, Minimal yeah. Hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's about minimalism and then like em also embracing your yourself, mm -hmm. sort of. And um, this one is um, painterly red and I, I, I made this image look like girl with the pearl earring-ish, <laughs> sort of, because I wanted the pop of red, um, the Blue. pop of the earring. And so um, I purposely kept, it, the, the earring is blue. It looks just like that. Um, and, and I wanted that contrast of the, of the two. Um, this image was actually one of my throwaway images. I wasn't happy with the final result. So I cropped it in until I saw something that really struck at me. So that's another thing. For any photographers or artists that are here, if you see something that doesn't work, don't throw it out. Maybe walk away from it for a moment and come back and rework it by doing something that's completely not what you intended at all. And, and you'll find its own sort of beauty just kind of poking out at you. Like it, it will come out at you, it will mm -hmm. poke at you. You'll see it. I, I like the feeling too of not seeing the face, you know, just uh, exposing the lips. Um, but as you were saying earlier, how you started with taking shots of yourself without showing the full mm -hmm. face. Yep, and that's one, again, the window light. I love my window light. <laughs> um, this one is, you know, feeling anxious. And I wanted to depict feeling anxious because I really was feeling anxious. I'm like, oh my God. So how would I express this feeling? And I just kind of kept going like this. I'm like, oh, I'm going to shake my head. So um, this is two, two images. Um, the first one, I dragged my shutter, which is a really slow exposure in my camera. And I, I moved my head as it was taking the photo. And then the other one is just like a regular exposure. Um, and I used the black back, backdrop for that one. What is the material? It looks like plastic. It is plastic. Okay. <laughs> it's plastic from you know, the plastic that you use to wrap a basket with or like something like that. Yeah, from the dollar store. Um, I, love, I love the red. I love the red and I love the movement in it. I think um, the red is very powerful um, and I'm doing something powerful. Like, you know, like there's like movement, <laughs> like powerful movement and there's like power all over the image, but I'm really still like confined. So I like that just a juxtaposition. Yeah, it explains how you were feeling at the time and the, mm -hmm. the emotion you wanted to convey. Yes, it's kind of like writing in a diary and then you <laughs> show everyone your diary and then you walk away. You don't know what they're, how they react, how they react to what you mm -hmm. wrote in your diary. You just kind of walk away, let it live on its own. Um, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I use like really, really inexpensive everyday props in my in my photography and um, I do that as a personal challenge to myself and also to teach others that you don't need a lot to make something really stand out you can do it with whatever you have mm -hmm. um, that's a great lesson yeah I think it really challenges you as well it challenges you to see differently and think differently, think outside your box. Mm -hmm. And sometimes minimal, min minimalism mm -hmm. is, you know, strong and powerful. I love so it. So that challenge kind of um, lets you express in different ways. For sure. Um, and speaking of minimalism, my house is actually like all white. Like um, when people come over and they're like, oh my God, you're an artist. Like you have no, like no <laughs> art. Not even my children's <laughs> photos, like no art on the wall at all. I like seeing it white because it, to me, it's like a blank canvas. If I see art on the wall, subconsciously, I'm going to start reproducing whatever I'm seeing every day. So that's why I like nothing. Um, and this one, 
I found a dead, is that a palm tree leaf, I think, or tree leaf or branch? It looks like a branch. I can't tell what kind. Yeah. Again, I love dead plants, so I wanted to repurpose it. And I actually have a lit, like a, a, a few in my garage, dead leaves and plants. Um, and so I wanted to feel like something is growing out of me. Um, but yet I also wanted to feel like whatever was there has moved on, um, but there's still kind of hope. So that's what, that's the meaning behind that looks one. It looks like wings too. And this, that's what I yeah. like. Yeah. It looks like, wait, like I'm flying, like I'm about to fly away. That's what I like about that one. Um, I like to, I was really into philosophy in college. And so I still am sort of kind of, and so, I, um, to me, things don't die, they just transform. So this dead thing um, is, is dead in its physical nature, but it's still there and it's transformed somehow, some way. So that's what I wanted to show with that one. Again, I did this one during quarantine um, and it's a composite. I shot it in my living room. This is um, composited in, um, this here is composited in as well. How many pieces total did you have in the Sony project? Um, I produced, I think it was, I think it was 12. I think it was 12. Oh. I think that's the last one. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs>I used again the, the teal colors and, and all that um, and I shot myself a few times rolling around in this set and I ended up putting together these two images um, but yeah no it's it, it was a set at wall crawl um, again if, if you see something um, this is more like it's not just for photographers, but just for anything, for life and whatever. If you see something um, and if it doesn't fit your aesthetic, you don't have to like sit there and, and, and take it and, and try, to make your, try to make that aesthetic fit you. Mm -hmm. You can mold and make that aesthetic what you want it to mm -hmm. be. Um, so a lot of that you're doing in your post-production after you do the shoot. Yeah, yeah. The lighting was here. It was very flat. It was lit straight on because they had their own studio. I, I brought in my own light. Um, but the color grading here is all in my... I, I did all the color grading. How, what did they think of the image? They loved it. They yeah. actually want, want to see a different spin on their area um, and, and show it out to people. 
um, because you know everyone goes there with a the camera and all the pictures look the same. <laughs> it's not very exciting if all the pictures look the same and just the people change, you know. I looked at the set beforehand through their website and through their pictures because I knew I was, be I was, I was going to go in there. I had a limited amount of time to shoot and I really wanted to be strategic with what I did. Um, so I already had this idea before I even shot it. Yeah, yeah. I just needed to find the way to execute it so that I can make my vision come to life. So I played around with it for a little while. Um, you know, it was fun having a whole <laughs> studio to yourself and That's nobody was in there. <laughs> yeah, and they have a really like a cute swing and I shot on that swing too, but um, I haven't published that image yet because I didn't like the way it turned out. So <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing that. And we'll have uh, more Q&A at the end. Um, so we met Maribel and I say we um, staff here, Haani Hogan in the back and Kat Kwas is a gallery manager in 2019. So in 2019, we did an open call to artists to take them down to Aqua Art Miami. Um, so we wanted to invest in our local artists so that you know the world that comes out to Art Week in Miami knows how much talent's here. Um, we don't have a lot of commercial galleries in town, um, so we just thought it was something that you know we wanted to share because there there is, as you all know, a lot of great talent here in Central Florida. So we met through her application. So again. Uh, she was applying with her body of work, and um, and she won. So she was one of uh, several artists we took down to Aqua Art Miami. And if you haven't been there, they also run um, Art Miami. Uh, that's on the. Uh, it's a bigger fair, but it's the same company. Um, we we felt that Aqua kind of fits our our image. You know, it's like a fun emerging artist um, group of a group of emerging galleries that represent um, local artists or mm -hmm. emerging artists. Um, so tell us about that experience and what you thought of um, your being part of the Aqua Art Miami show. Any um, lessons you want to share or takeaways? Yes. Uh, I was very surprised that I, I won, that you guys picked me to go down there and, and, and bring my work. I, I interviewed with you guys um, after you guys expressed interest. And um, I was like, man, this is like the real deal. Like, this is crazy. And, um, you know, I really wanted my pieces to be very well uh, made in terms of printing and framing. And so it's an investment to print and frame. And it's not cheap. <laughs> like, and if it's going to Miami and with those, there's, there's a different kind of expectation um, with different audiences that you show art with. So I really, I really, you know, I had to bring it like museum glass, like have it professionally framed. It was an investment and um, I'm really happy that I had that experience because I learned a lot. And um, the, two, one piece sold, which is mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> um, the other piece uh, almost sold, um, but then it sold up here, mm -hmm. which is, phenomenal too um and uh you know just being down there is such an honor and did you feel like you had more traction on your social media channels and did you get additional uh, followers from the experience i did um mostly the people that were um down there already they kind of wanted to go and, and check out my work um and also i got a lot of love from other artists that were there and they saw my work and they started reposting and, and, and sharing and things like that. And that was really cool. Um, the banana. Do you guys remember the banana that was, was taped to the wall? It was, it was that same year. <laughs> the banana year. That was the same year. Yeah. So the banana got all the attention. <laughs> so I do say, well, you know, I was was in our basil our basil when the banana incident and everyone's like oh yeah that's so cool so whatever i'm, I'm happy to be represented at the, in the same kind of soiree as the banana i like it well it's definitely memorable yeah so it, it is oh yes she Yeah. So it's really people 
people were coming into our exhibit space being like, oh, I'm so glad I can see this in person. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, um, staff here didn't actually select the recipients. So we, we put a panel together of, um, of uh, curators from museums and you know, tried to get a diverse group of six people, gallery uh, folks that run galleries, um, you know, the director of Manello Museum, the director of Cornell Museum. So we tried to um, you know, just get different stakeholders involved in selecting the artist. Um, so, so it's not just us. Um, and we've met a lot of new people through that process that maybe didn't show here before, but now um, we're just really so proud of you and your work and happy that you're one of our spotlight artists. That's cool. Thank you. That's really um, cool. So one, one of the things I wanted to share in, in our experience working with Mary Bell, um, it is just such a pleasure. She has such a great work ethic and so professional. And that's not always the case. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about that or have you share, like, where did you learn all of your, um, your excellent um, processes of, you know, having um, everything all buttoned up? Um, working with galleries, a lot of people don't know how to work with galleries. Um, and we're not a traditional gallery, we're a community gallery. So we're really here for the local artists to give them experiences and to help them grow. Um, but when your art leaves here, we're not representing you. Uh, but Mary Bell has um, a very strong um, understanding, or I feel like you do. And um, you know, talk a little bit about um, how you got there and maybe share what that, what that is. Like, yeah, um, I love art. Um, growing up, I thought that being in an art gallery was like the creme de la creme of like being an artist. And so I, I've always admired it. And when you admire something, you study it, and you want to find out how did this person get from here to here. And I, I look at people and photographers that I admire, and I think, man, it's so cool that they got there. And if they can do it, I can do it too. And I want to know how they got it. So mm -hmm. I studied on it, and I studied art galleries and what, what the expectations are and, and how to properly like name things and, and frame things and what they look for in, in dimensions and how you, how, what pieces kind of go well together and how they flow. Like I really studied a lot. Um, when I'm passionate about something, I'm really passionate about it. And so that's what I did. Um, <clears throat> and um, one of my uh, biggest, uh, well, I'm a big admirer of Brooke Shaden. Mm -hmm. um, she's also a self-portrait photographer, um, and she's my friend now, thank you very Aww. much, <laughs> because um, she's huge. Um, and you know, I follow her, and I kept asking her questions, and she replied back, and she was one of the people behind the Sony. You know, she, oh, she's represented by Sony as well. And she was so proud when I won the Sony Award. So, you know, the art gallery, you, the art gallery community is actually kind of small. Um, and, and, and people tend to know each other and follow each other. Mm -hmm. And so just following her and following other artwork, um, mm -hmm. other art galleries and seeing how they operate and things like that. Um, and, and looking at what not to do as well. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube, mm -hmm. like art galleries say, don't do this, don't do that. You should do this, you should do that. The information is there, just do it. Um, and so with art galleries, um, and just with anything in life, um, I would say, I don't want to sound preachy, but I keep saying this, like if there's an open call for something, apply. It doesn't cost, it might cost like 20 bucks, 15 bucks here, but you never know where that can take you. Like mm -hmm. I got into, um, city arts through like an open call for like a third Thursday or one of those monthly long mm -hmm. shows. Um, just apply. I never thought that I would go down, get selected for Art Miami Aqua, Art, Art Miami, Week. Miami, yes. um, I never thought that I would win Sony Alpha Female. Just you know, applying. Why not? I apply for everything. Like I apply for so many things, and people ask me like, "Oh my God, how did you win this?" And I'm like, "It's there. Just go for it." You know, you never know. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't win, then it's an experience and apply it to the next one. 
Yeah, traditionally, they're not all looking for you. You have to yeah. make your presence known. And, and I think it's brilliant that you, um, you know, have some mentors also that you follow and have built relationships with. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when, when you do make it easy and you're professional with your work, um, galleries, collectors, they want to work with you more. You know, so one of the things Mary Bella does, she has her certificate of authentication. Mm -hmm. um, they're all hangable. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's pretty well thought through um, right. before she's interacting you know, with the gallery mm -hmm. or the collector. For sure. And then when she gets a collector, she generally sends them to us if it's local, right. which it, we really appreciate. Um, and pricing wise, the price is generally the same. So if you buy it from us or you buy it outside of the gallery, it's going to be the same price. So you're not devaluing something that somebody bought somewhere mm -hmm. else. Right. You know, so that standard is staying um, the right. same throughout. For sure, yeah. Um, do you have any other uh, mentors and or artists that you follow or aspire to um, be like? Okay, so I also do like regular photography work with models and, and, and I teach photography now, which is really cool. I teach it for Kelby One. And um, between me and you, I'll be teaching my second class at the end of September, which is really awesome. I'm preparing for that now. Um, I love teaching. I love showing people how to do whatever it is I'm doing. So I don't, my, I have a little YouTube page. I don't have many videos on there yet, mostly because I work full time and I just have a lot going on. Um, but you know, I do try to show it a little bit on my Instagram, wherever I can, on my Facebook, if I can. Um, I will be showing more of it. Um, I wasn't showing it because I wasn't confident in my work before. Um, but as I see that my technique and my my skills are a bit more refined. Um, now I feel a little bit more confident to kind of show people um, how I do my work. Um, and I forgot your question. <laughs> well, we were just talking about, um, do you have anyone that you aspire to oh, be yeah. like? Do you have other mentors they didn't share? Like who, um, who do you admire okay. in the photography world? Okay, right. So um, because I do other photography, I am really inspired by uh, Lindsay Adler. Um, uh, you know, um, it's just a, a slew of uh, Richard Avedon, just old school, like Herb Ritz. I love the um, kind of bold, boldness of, of his images. And I think that these images, my self portrait images, kind of look painterly, whereas my more standard photography, it looks very bold and in your face. Whether it's, it's the lighting or, or the styling or the concept, it's really bold and in your face. Um, and, and because it's photography, sometimes, um, you know, it's a little different than painting something that's one of a kind. So you have some images that you have additioned and open. Um, what is that mm -hmm. process for you? Um, so with the sizes range, they're all pretty much limited editions. Um, I don't know if I have it. I, had, I have a couple open edition, but not very much. But they're limited edition. Um, the, the bigger sizes are up to 15, so I'll sell 15 of them. Um, the medium sizes, I'll sell up to like 35, and then the smaller ones up to 50. And um, you know, when someone buys uh, uh, an edition, the price goes up, so it's it's up, 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 the price goes up of the next um, edition in that same series. So it's it's a, it's an investment, but it's it's more of a, a lucrative investment because you can down the line sell that piece again if you wanted to um, for the the current value, which could be double or three three times the amount. Um, that was I'm sure a learning process. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I want to get into NFTs, so I'm, I'm making oh, digital good. art where my self-portraits are interactive and kind of moving around and things like that. That's so great. that's, that's does pretty it, cool. Does everyone know what an NFT is? Do you want to explain that? There's a couple of people in the audience that don't know. Okay, so NFT is uh, non-fungible token. tokens. <laughs> yes. I've, I've, I've heard it called other things as well. 
but it's basically like buying uh, buying and selling um, the same oh, kind it, of it, art. It's like an original piece of art but digitally. Digitally, exactly. They, they found a way to make art digitally right. authenticated as one. Authenticated, it's right. Through, it through, it grows, yeah, yeah, it grows. You can't make series, you can't make, you know, like edition or something. Like right. I, you admit that it's just one. Right, but also you can make money off every time it's sold as well. It depends on how you mint it. Um, so you can do that with regular prints, regular JPEGs, or you can make it kind of digital art where it's moving and it's interacting and you know it's flowing. Um, I think that's really cool because you, it's really hard to buy like a video that you see on the wall from an art gallery. So this provides that kind of place where you can do that. So I think that's really cool. Have you sold any? No, uh, <laughs> I haven't. I'm not even like. We have to get invited, and like yeah, I'm looking for. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm looking for someone to invite me. So if anybody <laughs> knows, we'll help look into me that. <laughs> Who? The, there's uh, a, there's uh, a, yeah. To get, you know, there's different platforms that are creating a lot of, yeah. I mean, it's in its infancy still, so there's yeah. going to be many, many platforms. Yeah. I'm excited about so, that. So all of this, to boil it down, the NFT is uh, using blockchain technology, and um, mm -hmm. it's just uh, a way to sell and mm -hmm. um, move original works right. Right. through the blockchain technology. Right, yeah. So that, that's exciting. It is exciting. That, that actually leads me to one of the questions that I have. Um, so first of all, I wanted to find out what has been your greatest challenge in becoming a photographer and um, as you grow professionally and how did you overcome it? Is there anything that you would uh, want to share for aspiring photographers? Um, my greatest challenge would be time management because I work full time and man, I'd rather be like making art all day long <laughs> instead of working full time, which is, you know, I'm a photographer for Darden restaurants. So I, I do photography work, but it's very limited and restricted on, on what I can shoot. Um, so when I come home, you know, cooking dinner or I'm getting kids from practices or I'm, sh you know, chaperoning or carpooling someone somewhere, or I'm coming home and doing stuff around the house that needs to be done um, and then helping with homework or whatever and then the, when kids go to bed then I should be going to bed but I don't I, <laughs> I'm on the computer and you know my mom yells at me because I'm on it until like midnight or I used to stay on until one in the morning and then get up at 6 30 and go to work um, that, that's not healthy so um, but you know you do have to sacrifice a little bit of of your time for for getting to your goals. So sacrifice is um, a challenge. Mm -hmm. And also um, looking at your work, you're constantly looking at yourself and you're almost competing yourself, competing with yourself. Like, is this good enough? You know, am I good enough for this? Do, do I have what it takes? Um, so self-reflection is mm -hmm. also a, a challenge. Um, and you know, that comes with all artists, you know, I look at my work now and I'm like, I'm like, oh, could you <laughs> fix that, you know? You know. I, I've heard for, from some of our, our visual artists that sometimes they get, um, you know, they have different phases, you know, of what they're doing with their work, the subject matter, the technique. And sometimes uh, people will identify you by that particular style. Yeah. And so yeah. sometimes they want to do something different to break out of it. So, mm -hmm. you know, that evolution of uh, trying new things. Right, yeah. For sure. Um, which kind of leads me to my next question, and this is the last question before we take more questions from the audience. Um, what is next for you and your photography endeavors? So, um, I, I, I was focusing a while on, for a little bit on just, like what you said, changing what I do, and I started shooting like models and doing editorials, which is super fun. Um, um, but now I'm ready to go back and do more self-portrait work. Um, so I'm going to film this second class for Kelby One, and um, that will go out the door. And then I'm going to focus more on self-portraiture work, just doing some back-end stuff, um, updating my website that needs to be done, working on my YouTube page. Um, but between me and you, <laughs> um, 
I haven't told anyone this, so at all, but um, I entered a contest and um, the contest was by Microsoft. Oh, wow. um, and they um, recently let me know that I'm a finalist in the contest. So um, you'll be seeing me on the Microsoft um, website. Um, and there's a ch I have a really good chance of winning um, $25,000 and um, doing a project for Microsoft. That is but. great. That is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. And that, and we didn't know the answer to that question, just so you all know. <laughs> no, they didn't. I haven't this told is, anyone, just my daughter. She's the only one who knows. Um, is, <clears throat> yeah. Congratulations. Thank That's very you. exciting. They're awarding it to four people, and um, I'm one of the 20 finalists that they're... Wow. Um, but um, they've already um, awarded me, I haven't got it yet, but um, a computer, um, and uh, I'll be on tablets? their website. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. And it was all from entering a contest. You never know what's going to happen. Um, I, I have a positive outlook on on things, and certain things I don't, certain things I do. Um, but I, I I see myself at a certain uh, level, um, and so a way to get there is taking advantage of any opportunities that come along your way, even if you don't think that anything is going to come out of it. You never know who's going to see it whose eyes is going to run through it. They might go on your website and see something else they like. You never know. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing thank all this you. with us. Um, any other questions from the audience for Maribel? Anything at all? Any advice on starting a website? Starting a website? Do you have any advice? Okay, I need advice on it. <laughs> okay. I'm on Smug Mug. I'm on Smug Mug. And... Um, Apparently, Smug Mug is for old people who shouldn't do it. So I'm thinking of changing to, I think it's 22 frames or, some, or format or something. I don't know. Um, but Smug Mug, it, they have templates. You can just choose a template and just plug it in and, and go. Super easy. Um, recently, I learned, okay, so I was going to buy a don domain. My domain is maribelphotography.com. Um, I, because I do video and commercial work, I was just going to go with maribel.com. So I went in and I, and I saw it was available, $14. I'm like, great, it's available. <laughs> I went in a, a week later and someone bought the donate, donate oh, no. name from under me and now it's about, it's about five grand. Yes. If you see a domain that you like and it's $14, That's the moral of the story is take it. <laughs> Huh? Is that from what's that It right? was from GoDaddy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Who would want Maribel.com? Why would you want Maribel.com? Somebody probably saw you have it. <laughs> Somebody probably saw me um, look it up, or maybe they went on my Instagram, or somebody saw and said, hey, you know. I guess so. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I'm like, no, it's not even worth it. I'll just keep Maribel photography, but I'm like the nerve. So if anyone has any other suggestions on websites, uh, yes. please uh, comment and let Maribel know. Yeah, we'll pass it along to her. I can do Maribel.net or Maribel.org. I don't want to overcomplicate it. But, you know, I'll just keep it. So I will be updating my website soon. Um, I'm also doing video, like I do video work on the side, just for fun. That's great. Yeah, it's fun. You do what you love. I do, I'm very passionate about it. I, um, be, it it's also challenging because I'm a self-portrait artist, so <clears throat> you're taking pictures alone, you're editing alone, you know, you're, you're scouting <laughs> for stuff. I usually take my kids, go to the dollar store, but you know, it's like a lonely process. It does get lonely, it does get to you. I taught myself video via YouTube and through Kelby One because I, I, I was also a Kelby One student. So um, I, I just taught video, I mean, I learned video there just by doing it um, on my DSLR and just making a crap ton of just crappy videos and I keep learning to tweak it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I work for Olive Garden full time and I make their training aids. 
Um, so I also now, I said, hey, I know how to do videos. Here's another skill set I know how to do. How do you guys feel about me shooting videos for you guys, training videos? And that's what I do that's great. for them as well. So they don't have to hire someone out. I'm a, a, a person of many hats, you know, <laughs> video editing, video producing, all that it stuff. It sounds like you love to learn. Oh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I like it, maybe. Yeah, so um, yeah, diversify. I just love creating. I love, I love it. My friends and family, they know. Like, even like I have Snapchat and I just make like little Snapchat movies playing with figurines and like, like I make a whole movie, like an action figure just out of like Snapchat. Like I love being goofy and, and stuff like that. You'll be doing virtual reality before you know it. That stuff makes me nauseous. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if I could do it. It's a little too much. Yeah, well, thank you again. Let's give her a great round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. I, this means a lot yes, to me. Thank I you appreciate all. it. That's, this is awesome.